fret not. Um, we have a special guest here today, so I'll be introducing him, and then I'll leave it up to him. And his name is Tomateo. 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 Or as Jim says, tomato, tomato. But uh, a dear brother in Christ from Mozambique, and as uh, most of you know, there's a long history with this church and the brothers and sisters here and Charles Woodrow and all things Mozambique. Um, so Timoteo um, has been, has, has a long history with Charles as well. I think they first met in the Fiel Conference, Pastors Conference. Uh, we've been supporting him, uh, last name Bila. I, I struggled so much with his first name, I never got to his last name. And a lot of, uh, Charles just refers to him as Bila and a lot of people do, but uh, we've met his wife. He's uh, got two sons and a daughter. When Belinda and I were there, I had time to get to know him a little bit. But Charles speaks so highly of this guy. He, he's so solid in his doctrines um, and studies. Uh, part of, many of you have heard the Mission Ecclesia mission operation in, in Mozambique, the book study. And they're reading heavy material, you know, Pink and Spurgeon. And it's a book club, a reading club, and they meet monthly, and they have to report on it, and they get free books if they participate a great organization it's also supported by heart cry which is paul washer's ministry uh you know we've donated to that as well but i could go on and on and he'll run out of time uh but very accomplished in mozambique and now he's studying for his master's in church leadership um through gordon college uh we've also been supporting him in his tuition there uh, he's here for a couple weeks in the U.S. He's here in San Antonio for a few more days. Uh, he's pretty much got an open schedule. So if you want to meet and visit with him, have lunch, have coffee, have dinner, reach out to Blender myself, and we can make that happen. Um, as he's speaking, you know, he's got a slideshow. Feel free to ask questions. He'll open it up for Q&A at the end as well. But... Um, yeah, we will be doing a love offering, a copy offering in the regular service at the end, so keep that in mind. Uh, that'll help him with some of his travel expenses and things like that. So with that, let me uh, pray for him and turn it over. Heavenly Father, we are just so thankful for your mercies upon us and uh, how you, you shower your grace upon us, Lord. We are so undeserving and we thankful, we're thankful for... Uh, Timoteo, for being with us today, that you've given him safe travels here, and we pray for his family in his absence, uh, that you just sustain them and give him safe travels back and give him words to speak, Lord, as he presents what uh, he's working on as he moves forward in spreading the gospel and uh, working with families in Mozambique in the name of Jesus Christ. And we just pray for him today, lift up our time, that uh, you would bless us today, Lord, and we ask for these things in the name of your Son, our Savior whom without we are lost, Jesus Christ. Amen. Good morning. Morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's a pleasure to me to be here. I'm not English speaker, so I speak Portuguese and other languages, Mozambican languages. But I will try to do my best. And uh, if you don't understand what I will be saying, you will see uh, something uh, projected. So thank you for your prayers. I, th I know, and uh, I'm too much um, uh, thankful to the Lord uh, because of you uh, supporting my life. I know that you, some of you are covering my studies, uh, and I know that you are praying, so I'm really thankful. And my wife, she, she's saying also, thank you guys. So I will just uh, speak a little bit faster so that I can cover all the information, but as uh, our friend uh, uh, and my father, uh, Don said, I'm struggling with your name. Don. Yes, it's, that's great. Yeah. So, that's as he said, <laughs> uh, we will be speaking uh, each other um, uh, later after service. So, I will start here. 
I am Timothy Bila, so as I saying here, my passion is to be engaged in transformational lives and worldview across Mozambique by teaching and applying holistically the kingdom and the grace of God in Christ. God put this passion in me, uh, not in this way, uh, when I was uh, 15 years. And really, I was trying to do my best in the church, teaching children, youth, uh, until now. Um, but I never decide to, I have that passion when I was young that I need to be engaged 100%, for example, to the ministry. But when I grow up, I thought, mm -mm, this is dangerous for my wife, for my children. I need to provide them some secure, some safe. Um, I think you understand my English. So then I, I never, but now, two months ago, three months ago, I decided to be more engaged and use all what God gave me to bless the church. And the church in Mozambique, youth people, pastors, I just speak in my ears every time. We need to be taught, we need your insights, we need, but I never decide because I would like to provide enough for my children because I come from a poverty uh, situation in my life when I was young. So it's, it was not easier. But God defeated me. He's victorious always. always. So now he convinced me 100%, in 100% level that I, I have to do it. Dr. Charles, since I went to Nampula, was saying the same thing. You have to be uh, involved uh, in ministry 100%. But I was fighting against God. But I think uh, today is one of the moments I rejected to organize. But God organized for me, and you uh, are just sitting and hear what God is putting in me. So I will not read everything what I will put in slides, but you can uh, see it. I married to Sarah. It's my wife, unique wife. and. <laughs> Uh, and a woman, unique woman. So I have three children, uh, a daughter, Kinsili, and two sons, Unat and Etienne. I degree in sociology in the uh, most important university in Maputo. I'm doing uh, philosophical theology and also uh, educational leadership in Gordon College. Um, I'm a leader of um, Gospel of Grace um, Church it's associated with Believers Fellowship Church in Christ in Nampula with Dr. Charles Woodrow Ministries. Um, and God, during time, he used me since 2003 in Maputo to spread out the doctrines of grace among uh, people there, especially uh, youth people. So I, I, I thank God because really, I was instrumental to spread out the doctrine of grace. It was complicated in Maputo, but God helped me in that, that moment. So Ecclesia has a mission. It's a Mozambican organization emerged in 2013 uh, in Nampula. But the idea came from what we were doing in Maputo uh, 2007. Uh, we organized a small school to teach the doctrines of, uh, of grace and to teach reformed theology for people. And we did it for, for some years. Then I went to Nampula and the, uh, with the support and the encouragement of Dr. Charles, I really um, uh, lead um, the foundation of this organization uh, called the Ecclesia with the other guys, good guys. Uh, the uh, pastor Kizito uh, and other people, and now Ibrahimu, and I'm working with another guys there. Uh, Carl Peterson also, he's a good guy. He had helped me a lot with books, reformative books. I read a lot of books because of his ministries, so I'm thankful for him. So we understand and we celebrate that Mozambique is really 
being a good space for uh, go gospel growth, you can see uh, that it's the church, evangelical church is growing, but we feel also that p many people still uh, struggling with the doctrines of grace and they don't have biblical uh, tools uh, to build families and churches. Uh, we had a lot of corruption deeply, even inside of church. So it's something make me very sad uh, I would like to contribute uh, uh, in it. Um, we have lack of intentional initiative to build church and also new generation. And uh, we have Islam is growth, grow, growing a lot. So we need to pray so that the church can open eyes and uh, preach the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to, so, to save our new generation. Yeah. So we were doing a lot of things, not too much, uh, in Mozambique as Ecclesia, uh, seminars for pastors, um, for youth conferences, magazine, reading clubs, um, seminar for couples, enjoy your marriage, wonderful thing we're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Short review about marriage and parenting. This is, we are starting now. Church planting, Bakua hymn, we are tra translating good hymns you are singing now to Makua. In my language, I'm coming from Maputo, I'm, I'm coming from a different place. We have good hymns in Shangana. Some hymns you are singing in English, we are singing in Shangana. So I would like, I'm, I dream it uh, since I went there in Nampula so that the population can have uh, him. So Anna, who is working with Dr. Charles, Anna Malomi is helping me. I invite him to join this project. So she's wonderful missionary helping us. That is the work of missionary, really. We need to see them engaged with the Church of God and once we have vision, we need to invite everybody who has a skill to help the ministry in Mozambique. But in this moment, we are changing our approach, working approach. And uh, uh, last time, during the years, we were touching people, just doing seminars, things like that. It was like an addition approach, but now we need to deepening, uh, we need to work really with leaders, it is like a multiplication approach, not just touching them, but working with them, mentoring. I will, I will speak about it later. So this is based on what Jesus is telling us. You read, I think, uh, you are Bible readers, Luke 13. I will not read, I will not preach. But you can see that God is looking through it in our lives. And then, oh, in, it's how to pronounce this, I don't know, vineyard. Uh, it's a vineyard, is it? Vineyard. Vineyard. So Jesus was saying, is looking uh, uh, fruit from a f um, fig, and then there is no f fruit. So a worker was saying, give him a chance. And then Jesus gave him a chance. And then the work was are doing his job like digging and fertilizing and then maybe the fruit appear there. So it's a serious passage to tell us as Ecclesia that we need to work hard so that we can see the fruit of kingdom around Nampula and Mozambique. So we reorganize the strategy, the vision first, the mission and our values, seeing that we are here to train and develop holy-headed and skilled leaders rooted in the Christian worldview, participating in holistic support networks and fellowship. This is what we do. And then what we dream, it's Mozambican leaders joyfully extending the kingdom of God in people and practice. And the way we are behaving is inspiration. We have to inspire. We are doing it, but we have to do it intentionally. That's why we put it intentionality. And then we need to like integrate the gospel of God with the daily 
life because many people are spiritualized everything or they understand that the kingdom of God is just going to the church and to do it and to sing and it doesn't matter how you are uh, leading your house, how you treat your wife, your husband, how you do business and everything. So we need to integrate faith with daily life. So how do we dig and fertilize? So we have three choices. Provide multi-generational training opportunities. We are speaking about pastors, leaders already there, but also we are speaking about new generations, youth and children. Nature, personal connection and support networks. We need to create a movement beyond pastors. We have a lot of independent churches, but struggling themselves because there's no support, there's no organization or if, uh, like a uh, association which can help them capacitate and help in terms of ethical uh, and discipline aspects. Ecclesia also must uh, be strong his organization. Yeah, so this is our choice. We have some initiative here. I will speak about only one initiative that is more bigger and integrate some other initiative I, I put here already here. So we have a strategic initiative as a pilot project uh, to guide us, to make us more focused, uh, to do what God put in our hearts intentionally. So we call it Frutus Dureno in Portuguese, or Fruits of the Kingdom. Training leaders, but not just training leaders. We need to see uh, churches with fruits of the kingdom. The way we will measure our training is see good initiative of churches. So uh, how Jesus is teaching us, what Jesus is teaching us about it, you know, once John, uh, John, uh, well, John Baptist, uh, he was in jail. So he sent the disciples to the Jesus asking, uh, are, you the, are you the one who is to come or should we expect someone else? The answer of Jesus, you know, Jesus didn't do a lot of speech. He just do things. He was saying, in what he did, that in this stage, the kingdom didn't come necessarily to break the evil of politicians like Herod, but to transform needies into people with full lives. So it means that all people deprived, deprived, deprived of kingdom life, uh, Jesus need to transform them. So you saw blindness, lameness, lepros, deafness, possessed, death. This situation is not just spiritual. It's spiritual, but also it's social, it's economical. It's just need to, to like bring in advance his kingdom. We know that we're not preaching like a prosperity, things like that, but the gospel need to mean something in the real lives for people. So, as uh, uh, Ecclesia, we need to train leaders to be a kingdom fruits. We choose some initiative. We understand that we have capabilities and the skill to support leaders uh, to develop, like he organized like pre preschool in the church. Uh, it's a simple, cheaper. They, no church needed extra money for, to do that. So churches must organize uh, a preschool. We have there in Mozambique, uh, it is like a Baptist initiative um, uh, we have in Mozambique. We call preschool PEP. So we have that model cheaper. So we'd like to see many churches use it as an instrument to bless children and fathers and everyone. Complementary school programs. Uh, it's easy also. Many people, even in Dr. Charles Church, are doing it. 
but with no intentionality and uh, no organized way because they don't have leader to, to, to help. I went to Zimbabwe because I'm a part of like Transformation uh, Africa uh, equip. So I went to Zimbabwe. I see any good initiative I'm dreaming to, for Mozambique. There is a project initiated there where the church handled 20 uh, 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 tablets, for example. They put everything there, curricular uh, information. And then the children, youth people, when come uh, from school, went to the church and they have some facilitators and read uh, information, make exercise, watch video in it, uh, and tablet, and go on. It's wonderful and it's cheaper. Uh, and the interesting thing I'm dreaming to see in Mozambique. Uh, so we would like to see like reading cycles in churches, uh, replicating a training module. We are designing a module that are replicable, replicable, replicating maybe, I don't know. So uh, new small scale entrepreneurs, uh, I'm thank God because he trained me as uh, someone who can teach people to start their small business. Uh, and my other friends like Ibrahim, James, and other people, uh, we are trained to teach couples, families, uh, parenting. So uh, we are just we have enough skills to impact uh, the Mozambican church. So we, we need to see like evangelistic clubs, uh, arts, because our culture is empty. We don't see nothing in our culture. I was talking with Anna Malone when I. I was telling her about it. She was, yes, and I, I want to help you because I see that people are not doing nothing. They are osseous. You are bees, and the other side, people are osseous. We don't have culture. Just sitting, walking, talking, and nothing. So we need to make sure that God is develop, developing uh, good uh, skills uh, in church. Uh, and also we, are, we need to see like a new church planted locally relevant. Okay, let's go faster now. Our strategy, training strategy, is that uh, we will have three stages. The first one will have big number of people, pastors, leaders, and then uh, new generation leaders. So we'll have like uh, train them in replicable trainings, general training. Then second year, we will choose a half of these leaders to specialize them in five areas, education, business, family, uh, new generation issue, and the uh, preaching. I don't know if I'm forgetting something, and leadership. So, in third year, we will train like uh, leaders of leaders, people who are well skilled. We will choose a half of people in second year to let them become leaders of leaders so that they can initiate the same thing in their denomination, congregations, etc. But everybody who started with us in first year will continue until third year in leadership conferences. But only few of them will be leaders of leaders, according to their passions and uh, heart. So our approach, training approach, is like uh, doing the training uh, in person and mentoring. Mentoring is new thing in our approach as Ecclesia. We need to work with people. We need to help them. We will do like self studies based in app. I have here some example I can share after service. Um, they can use the same information in their churches. Uh, so we'll do like also like leadership conferences to help them in leadership skills also. We'll be visiting churches and doing like a social media movement, just saturating people of the gospel of grace of Jesus Christ. 
uh, I will not take time on this because it's uh, busy. It's uh, we have a lot of details there, but just to let you know that we uh, um, tried to organize three-year uh, curricular plan, and you can see that uh, in second year, uh, second year, we have all those uh, specialization because someone can have more passion in family, other one in education, and, 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 and so on. You can see the total number of hours we will uh, spend with these people during the three years. Yeah? So this is just an uh, example of what we organized. We are finishing now in a few minutes. Um, so the, the training uh, outcomes, you can see in this side, that the Ecclesia will be compromised to train these people during three years. Uh, in this area, as I spoke, you can see the numbers here. But the leaders, uh, those who will be trained by Ecclesia, they must uh, show us that they are understanding what we are uh, um, training the, them to, to do. So we need to see uh, new churches planted in, association replicating trainings, we need to see football clubs, we need to see small uh, active, uh, new active small entrepreneurs, arts uh, schools and preschools and reading circles. So we need to see not ecclesia, but churches are doing good initiative that can create impact uh, in the church uh, and the community. Um, so, in the end, what I can say is that uh, I hope uh, that you will keep praying. That is a call to action for you, what you can do. Please pray for the grace of God to be spread out across Mozambique. Pray for decision, our decision to give our lives to Mozambique Church and society. Well, this is not easy for me. I'm fighting with God, uh, against God during the years to be more involved. I'm involved since I was uh, 15 years, but I know that uh, I'm not using everything uh, to bless the church. And I know that we cannot expect transformation in Mozambique if we are not spending time with people. So once I decided I need really to go on, but it can happen if you pray, if you ask God to bless me, to bless other people, Dr. Charles, Anna, and Ibrahimo, and the other people who are working for us. And also, please invest what God give you, still invest. Bless people in Mozambique with your money, with your resources, with your, I don't know what you have, what you in your hands, but bless the church of Mozambique. And you, go, and you will see, you will celebrate the fruits of the Holy Spirit there. I think so. So, again, thank you for your prayers and the investment you made in my life through studies, which some of you are covering. Thank you, thank you, thank you all. You don't know how, how it will be a blessing for church and the new, genera new generation lives in Mozambique. So thank you. We have, um, is it okay if we just, we've had this conversation the last, yesterday, the three of us, if we just expand on that a little bit?